Hello, my name is Laura Ruzik. I am the director of the Richard L. Raudebusch VA Medical Center in Indianapolis, Indiana. Welcome to our virtual last roll call ceremony of remembrance. With great respect and appreciation, we honor the lives of the veterans and staff who have passed away over the last two years. Normally, this ceremony is facilitated for in-person attendance in our Veterans Chapel. However, due to the pandemic visiting restrictions, we were unable to have this ceremony in person over the last year and a half. We sincerely hope this video provides another unique opportunity to honor your loved one. This tribute to our fallen veterans and staff is fitting and proper. We pay our deepest respect to our veterans and staff and our heartfelt sympathies to you, their family, friends, and coworkers. Viewing this video provides you an opportunity to cherish fond memories, honor their service to our nation, and continue grieving your loss. Hopefully, finding peace in the love and care of those around you. Please know we have staff chaplains and others available to you here at the Richard L. Raudebusch VA Medical Center who are available to help you during this most challenging time in your life, grieving the most precious loss of a loved one. Please do not hesitate to contact us in your time of need. We extend our heartfelt gratefulness to you for allowing us to care for your veteran and or to serve alongside your loved one as fellow colleagues and friends. Please accept my personal condolences as well of the, as those of our staff as we hold you close to our hearts. Please know we honor you, we care for you, and you remain in our prayers. Thank you. Let us pray. God of comfort and strength, we thank you for this sacred space to celebrate the lives of our loved ones, to honor the courage, sacrifice, and strength of our fallen comrades who served our nation in uniform and our fallen VA staff who have served our nation's veterans. God of comfort, we pray that your strength, healing, and peace are with the loved ones who have suffered this great loss. Please encourage us and surround us with your love as we grieve. Fill our hearts and minds with your healing presence. Remind us, Lord, to cherish our beautiful memories. Embrace these sacred thoughts in our hearts for it is there where our loved ones continue to live on. Amen. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the dark At the end of the storm Is a golden sky And the sweet song of love Walk on through the wind Walk on through the rain Though your dreams be tall
from the book of Ecclesiastes. A good reputation is better than precious perfume. Likewise, the days of one's death is better than the day of one's birth. It is better to go to a funeral than a feast. For death is the destiny of every person, and the living should take this to the heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, because sober reflection is good for the heart. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is the house of merrymaking. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the youth shall fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, the sin of unbelief, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endures the cross, disregarding his shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Let there be a witness to the word of God. In this ceremony, we remember and celebrate the lives of loved ones, veterans who served our country, who have died from our midst. We deeply miss their presence. We use this time to remember and honor their remembrance, as well as to find strength for the days ahead. Each of you watch the ceremony of remembrance because the one you love has left their indelible mark on your life. And so it is, with gratitude for their presence in our lives, that we take time to honor our veterans today. There is much misunderstanding in our culture about grief. There are those who say it's time to get on with your life. Put it behind you, move on. There is this prevalent notion in our society that we get over the death of those we love. The truth is that grief is an experience that must be walked through. And every person must be free to react in their own way and for their own length of time. There is no right way to respond to grief. There is a right way for you. There is no such concept as getting over the death of someone you love. What we do need to remember is that grief is a transition, a process in which you learn to live with your loss and overcome it. Grief is about a relationship that must make a transition and that transition involves a new way of being in relationship with the one we love. Grief is a journey from a relationship of presence to a relationship of memory. This whole notion of remembering, of gathering, gathering comfort and strength from memories is what the writer of Hebrews appears to draw on in our passage of Scripture. In the previous chapter, the author recalls the generations of faithful who have gone before him. He seems to be gathering strength in their presence. So it is for us. There are those of the faith, known and unknown to us, who've influenced the way we have come to this point in our lives. The writer of Hebrews calls them such a great cloud of witnesses. And he seems to find encouragement in that fact. As the writer of Hebrews ponders this truth of this great cloud of witnesses who have died, you can almost see him standing a little taller and stronger. As we remember these loved ones, I would be remiss if I failed to remind us that we too should think and live in view of our end. Solomon, a person of great wisdom, asked, 
what is good for you and me during our fleeting life here on earth? Solomon then gives us a series of statements to tell us what is good for us. Solomon challenges us, think and live in view of your end. Above all else you do, make it your priority to pursue a good reputation throughout your life. How you live matters. Better to maintain a good reputation than to compromise your reputation for the sake of financial gain. Your good reputation can live beyond the grave, while the prosperity of this life, like the scent of perfume, ceases to linger. Who you are is more important than what you have or do not have. Just as a good reputation is more important than living a life of prosperity, so Solomon instructs us that the day of your death with a good reputation intact is better than the day of your birth with its promising beginning yet uncertain future. Let's pursue a good reputation right to the end of our lives. What can help us pursue a good reputation throughout our lives? Live in light of life's brevity. Even the greatest adversity, death, if wisely considered, will bring you benefits. Reflect on how temporary this life is. As you consider how quickly life passes, reflect, how can I make my life count today in a way that will bring eternal reward? Solomon states that reflecting on death is better than just having fun. Solomon counsels it's better to go to a funeral than a party. Why? Because death is the destiny of every person. You and I demonstrate wisdom when we come to terms with the brevity of life. This ceremony of remembrance reminds us then of life's brevity and our need to think seriously about our lives. While we prefer laughter and pleasure, Solomon informs us that sorrow and mourning provide benefits. Sober reflection can remind us we must give an account to God for our lives. As Solomon says, for God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it's good or evil. Solomon helps us examine if we're living wisely or foolishly as he highlights the contrast between wise and foolish persons. While the wise person ponders the meaning of death and lives considering eternity, the foolish person adopts a totally careless attitude toward life, often living just for the moment. So let this last roll call ceremony of remembrance serve as a reminder, begin with your death, the end of everyone, and build a wise life in marching to that end. Make your life count. How you and I live matters. As we prepare and as we honor these loved ones, our veterans, may God help us to think and live in view of our end, pursuing a good reputation right up to the end of our lives. May God continue to comfort your heart.
A candle representing the five branches of the U.S. Armed Forces will be lit for the veterans who died at the Richard L. Rodebush Medical Center in the past two years. Please remember your veteran when we light their branch of service. A single white candle representing the Rich L. Rodebush VA Medical Center staff members who have died in the past two years will be lit. Let's remember their service to our nation's heroes. We will miss our veterans of the U.S. Army. The U.S. Marine Corps. The U.S. Navy. The U.S. Air Force. The U.S. Coast Guard. And the VA medical staff. We thank you for their memory. And now we pause to close with our benediction. May the Lord our God bless us all to memorialize those who lived and died to preserve liberty and freedom in our nation and in the world. And may the Lord our God remember all those who sacrificed, gave this nation its greatness progress and riches. May our memory and all of those who served in the armed forces be an honorable one, full of thanksgiving to the Lord. And remember with much love and mercy the good deeds our departed comrades accomplished. Lord, be with us now to strengthen us Keep us, protect us, direct us, and keep us from straying away from you. All these things we ask in your name. Amen.